Hi everyone, this is Mary Long with My Art Dish. Today I'm with Wendy Thompson, who is in uh, outside of or inside of uh, Oconomowoc on Ashton. Um, and uh, Wendy, I got to know basically by following her on Facebook and realized that she was uh, managing, running, had started the uh, Wisconsin Plein Air Painters Association and have then met her a couple times at competitions and, and uh, she was a judge in one of the programs that I was in, in Northbrook. Um, and I have a whole lot of admiration for Wendy and for her work. So Wendy, uh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm looking forward to uh, our conversation today. Um, we're, we have lots to talk about. Uh, you have um, so much experience. So we will have a little tour of Wendy's uh, a studio, and you can see some of that behind her. But we'll also talk um, about uh, the judging that she has done of programs, more importantly, uh, some of the uh, what makes a, um, a good plein air group. And she's been helping establish plein air groups, not only in Wisconsin, but in other states as well. Uh, Wendy is an accomplished artist. And, and uh, so we have loads and loads to talk about today. And by the way, I told her the one thing that we'd make sure we talk about was that uh, she's also looking for somebody that's going to um, uh, help manage that uh, and maybe even take over, uh, succeed uh, management of the Wisconsin Plein Air Painters Association. So Wendy, I wanna start right at the beginning with you and what brought you to painting? Oh, that's a long, interesting story, but uh, to make a long story short, mm -hmm. my husband was painting. Mm. Years um, and with a group of artists, um, and I really loved what he was doing. And my children were growing up and leaving the house. And he is also um, worked for Harley Davidson and was working on motorcycles a lot and doing racing and all kinds of other stuff. So the, as the kids left, I thought, well, I could be in the garage handing them wrenches, or maybe I could learn to paint. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So. I and I'm dying, I'm dying to know, is part of the end of the story that you went off on the motorcycle and painted? No, no but uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, funny. Um, so I decided to start learning how to paint and I loved it immediately. Mm -hmm. I just, I fell in love with painting right away. And um, my husband actually quit uh, <laughs> shortly after that and did a number of other things, decided he wanted to learn guitar, went back to school and all of that. So I'm anxiously awaiting his return to painting so that we can do this together. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. But no, at least maybe he could serenade you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Wendy, uh, how about, can you talk a little bit about some of your influences? Who has influenced you as a painter? Oh my goodness. Um, okay. So uh, for 10 years, I studied under a gentleman whose name is Lauren Wiley. He's in the Milwaukee area. He's had a long standing group of artists who've come and gone from his, his um, organization. I think his organization is what called the Wisconsin Studio Artists. Oh. And I learned a lot of basics from him. Um, and then I just felt like I needed to spread my wings a little bit. And so I decided that I could, um, instead of doing weekly classes, do once or twice a year a national workshop. Mm. That just changed my life. Um, just, in, just in simple ways and in some not so simple ways, it just changed, changed everything for me. Um, I have studied under Ken Oster. Mm. Um, I studied under C.W. Monday. Wow. I studied under Dan Gerhardt's. Um, I love the Impressionists, all of them. I can spend a whole day in the Monet room at the Chicago Art Museum, <laughs> you know, just studying every stroke and color and all of that. So, um, yeah, th that's that's where my my background in the thing. Well, and, and, and tell us about some of your, uh, uh, about your painting. What media do you use? Um, I mostly use oils. I have done uh, some work in pastel, which I'm really intrigued in. And that's one of the things I'm, that's on my list to do right now is to get involved more with my pastels. Mm -hmm. You know, you said to me as we were prepping that you have a list of things that you want to do. Uh, one of the reasons I think that you're looking for a succeeder, um, uh, a successor, I guess. 
Um, so uh, both. Um, so uh, are there some other things on that list that you really want to do? Well, there are. I'd, li I'd like to do more travel, um, but there are there are specific things I want to learn. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, um, I want to learn how to utilize pastels outdoors better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that when I go outdoors to paint, I have that in my, you know, little toolbox. Mm -hmm. um, I did a whole year of uh, pastel work at one time because I had my four-year-old grandson come and stay with me. Keeping my oil paints up in the house where I didn't have a studio was not working. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. But I could I could set up my pastels and take them down really quickly. So after he went to bed at night, I was able to do that and maintain art in yeah. my life. Um, and and that worked really well until I walked outside with them. And then everything I did seemed really ugly to me. Oh. <laughs> so I've learned some tricks since then. I've, I actually took a workshop with Rita Kirkman, who I am just dying to get in there and and make part of my myself uh, some of the things I learned from her. That's great. I know that one of our uh, upcoming uh, uh, My Art Dish uh, interviews will be with uh, Nancy King Mertz. Uh, oh, yeah. Love, yeah. I love what she does. Absolutely. Yeah, she's really done it with uh, pastels. Well, mm -hmm. tell me about as you're painting a plein air painting, how do you approach a painting? Um, okay, so I start with values. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you hear all the time, value, value, value. Well, the thing that I've really learned is that in every painting, there is a light path and a dark path. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I'm outside and you're having to eliminate and eliminate and eliminate until you find the thing that you, you really want to say, um, it has more to do with the way the, the path of light works through your painting and the path of dark works through your painting, mm. how they relate to each other than anything else. So when I'm outside, that's the thing I'm looking for most. Um, I really have found that if I can um, find the right values in the right places, then I can almost put any color there. Almost. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I've uh, never heard that before in terms of the light path and the dark path, but it makes absolute sense to me when you're saying that. Uh, so uh, that's quite a nugget, I think, to take away from this. Good. <laughs> good. Uh, I have found a tool called the, um, the notonizer. Mm -hmm. have you, are you familiar with that? I, I have heard of it. Yes. In fact, I think it was Bill Schneider, who's also going to do a video chat with us, talked about a, a note, the notonizer uh, on uh, an app. Yeah, it's wonderful because you can yeah. be outside with it, use it on your phone, yeah. and, and really find the light and the dark path yeah. with it. So um, it's, a, it's a great tool to have, just a great yeah. tool. That makes so much sense. Thank you. I, I, I will uh, definitely be thinking about the path uh, coming up. And so let's move to the end of a painting. What do you do in your last 15 minutes or so? What are you looking for? Man, that's a great question. Okay. So when I took Ken Oster's class, his class is about um, what part of your painting is passion and what part of your painting is intellect. Mm. And he said, and this has just stuck with me now for, I don't know, 15 years, that um, the first part of your painting or the first 10 or 15 minutes has got to be intellect. In mm. other words, the composition and all those things, what you're going to paint, that needs to come from your brain brain, you know. Mm -hmm. But then he said 80, the next 80% is passion, where you're throwing paint. And then he said, you must slow down and go back to intellect again for the last part of the, of the painting. You need to decide, you know, have I achieved my focal point? Have I, you know, are the brushstrokes leaving there? Is there color there? Or is, what is making the focal point the focal point? Is it color? Is it a, is it a face? Is it, um, is it a dark um, against light uh, situation? What, what exactly is defining that? And when you slow down and look at that stuff at the, at the end of the painting, it tells you what you've missed and, and what you need to do most of the time. <laughs> yeah. 
But, you know, let's uh, kind of flip over to the other side. Um, I know you have judged uh, Northbrook. Uh, you said New Berlin and Wisconsin, uh, which I've ridden my bike in uh, <laughs> through. Uh, but um, uh, tell me a little bit more about your thoughts uh, since you've been working with groups. What is it to have judges and uh, what do you look for in uh, um, a competition that has judges? Okay, well, um, I personally think there needs to be more than one judge for especially a large show, um, even a smaller show. I think there needs to be more than one judge. You always have a certain style or something that you like that's hard to ignore uh, for yourself, but it's balanced when there's other people um, saying, well, what I like about this or what I like about that. Mm -hmm. So you work with, um, as you're walking through a show, you know, what's the composition, what's the color, did the artist achieve what they were looking to achieve? And that's a big thing. What was the intent of the artist? And, you know, as a judge, as someone looking at somebody else's work, finding intent is always really interesting. Sometimes you land there and sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. um, but um, for me, the, the, the core of it, is does it tug at my heart you know is is there something there that is pulling at me is there some poetry to it is there some mystery to it is there some um is it screaming or is it praying you know it, what is it doing in in me that that's making me drawn to this particular piece mm -hmm. those are some of the things that i think are really important both when i'm painting toward uh, competition and when I'm looking at others uh, work. Well, that makes sense. So let's jump out to a little larger uh, uh, thought about, um, I know that you've started uh, groups in Wisconsin and have been asked by others to help them start a group. Um, what's going on that, that um, all this is happening? What's going on in the art world? And what's your thought about the groups? Okay, so um, in 2005, I think I, um, I went to my very first outdoor painting competition. I had been painting outside and I always really loved it, but never in a competition setting. Um, and so I went to Southern Indiana and participated in the first brush of spring mm -hmm. in uh, New Harmony, Indiana. Um, and I absolutely loved it. It was the most exciting thing. I still, that's one of my favorite events to go to every year. Um, because it, it, the work is so good there that it pushes me all the rest of the year to, to find out how to do what I'm seeing in front of me. So um, it's exciting. The other thing is that it gets you out of the studio and, and into camaraderie with people who normally would be in the studio all the time. So there's <laughs> that, that thing for artists that's a really wonderful thing. Um, and I think that when I came back to Wisconsin and found we had nothing here going on in terms of a, an organization of artists who do plein air together, I just knew that that's what I needed to do is help organize and set that up and, and, and drive that to a place where, um, you know, it's, it's become this household word used to be when we were outside painting alongside the road, people would stop and go, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> yeah. but now really when we are out painting more and more, we get, the, I, I heard that plain air thing, you know, I, I heard it. I've never seen it before, but I've heard people do this and that's an exciting turning point for me. I think, um, I think if you want to make a contribution to, to culture in your community, standing outside painting is one of the biggest things you can do because children, think about this, children who grow up watching artists paint on the street and having that be normal, what does that do for the future yeah. of art in our country? I mean, just what does that do for that? That's just, that just is the coolest thing. So I don't know if I answered the question, I kind of probably got sidetracked. No, that, that makes perfect sense. And uh, uh, when uh, Christina Bodie was talking with me, she was talking about how she interacts with her kids to help them just be more sensitive to uh, uh, art and uh, having her, you know, being out with her kids and painting. And uh, so I think you're, you're both on this point that's really important and kind of making a hopeful future for uh, a better culture. 
Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, so, so um, the groups that you've helped start, what has, um, you know, it seems like it's, it's almost like a, uh, what you're ending up doing is making a marriage between the community and the artists, you know, what, what has to go into place or get into place to, to create a good plein air group? Okay, so there have to be people who don't think all the time like artists. <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, you know, you need to have, you need to find some people who have other skills, um, who have promotional yeah. skills and who, you know, they can be artists too, but they also need to, to understand some of these other things that need to happen in order for any successful organization to function. Mm -hmm. um, and they need to have a passion, I think a passion. For, for art. Um, so just gathering, I mean, the, gathering artists together is, you know, as you know, kind of like chasing butterflies. I mean, it, it's, it's awfully interesting to gather the artists together. But mm -hmm. then marrying that to the community is a whole other step. And most of the people that I've worked with in the community um, and in all around the state do not have the artist, you know, intellect, the artist brain um, that we are all blessed with um, on this side of things. So to make that leap for them takes a lot of education. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to help them appreciate and understand, for instance, what an artist gives up in order to get their gear together and go paint in, in somebody else's community, what it costs them literally and and um, what their struggles are and what even sometimes what the appropriate response would be to that. Um, it ha has been some, some educational stuff that needs to happen. Um, I found myself doing so much of the work in our organization that um, my organization wanted to do in more and more competitions, but I personally did not want to do those <laughs> competitions mm -hmm. because as you know, just doing one competition well is a huge undertaking. Yeah. And so what happened is people would contact me and try to um, have us come and do uh, what we were doing in their communities. Mm -hmm. And I would say, well, I'm more than happy to be the artist or to bring the artist to you and act as a liaison between the artist and your organization mm -hmm. and educate you about what you need to do to make that success. And so I think, um, this year we don't have quite as many, but I think last year there were 22 competitions in the state of Wisconsin. 22, wow. I think there were 22. Some are larger, some are smaller, some are brand new, some are, you know, one day or two days. Some are, you know, the one, uh, Cedarburg going on this week, it's a 10-day event. So, mm -hmm. um, but there, there's more. And, and here's the thing, um, you know, paintings from your community don't just stay in your community. They mm -hmm. go to your children or they're gifted to somebody or, and they travel all over the country and sometimes all over the world representing your community. You cannot pay for a, a better promotion of your community than planner artists doing artwork in your community. You just can't, you can't buy that. Um, kind of advertising anywhere, anyway. Absolutely. I, I had an opportunity to uh, visit the Soroya uh, Museum when I was in Madrid. And that was one of the things that they said about him was that they had, um, the Spanish government had employed him to paint people in the different uh, dress of the, of the different communities, areas. Um, and really as a first uh, sort of PR for those communities. So I think it's interesting that now generations after, uh, you know, plein air painting is, is uh, continuing in that, in that mode, as you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting to me. Um, you know, and I found, um, I have paintings now. That, I mean, they've traveled like seeds, you know, all, all That's over right. the place. People move, you know, people and... Um, I, I don't do a lot of commissions because I'm not, I can't crawl into the head of people who want me to do commissions and understand what they really want. So I, I'll do a soft commission, what I call a soft commission, where I'll paint something and then if they like it, they can buy it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. 
I just more comfortable that way. But um, but some of those paintings were of people's homes or something that they really cared about. And a couple of them um, were done because people were moving and they wanted to remember a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they're like seeds. They're, they're just like yeah. seeds. That's wonderful. It's, it's a great way to, uh, to think about it. You know, I want to um, uh, just kind of ask you if you have any advice for painters, anything that you'd like to pass on, more seeds? Uh, well, I will tell you this. I think, I, I think that plein air painting is the shortcut to learning how to paint. Mm. Um, I think, you know, your first 50 paintings you're going to hate. <laughs> but after that, you're going to start understanding what needs to happen. Part of the reason for that is you have to get yourself out of the way when you're planning or painting. Um, something in the back of your mind that you know um, takes over and you have, you have the ability to put forth part of you um, that maybe you wouldn't if you had to take more time to think about it. Yeah. Um, but because the light changes so quickly, you've got to make decisions more quickly and do things more quickly. And, you know, the likelihood of going back there the next day and having things just the same is just not, not likely. Yeah. So I think learning to paint outside, um, even if you never show that work, even if you never, ever show that work, um, is the fastest way to learn how to paint. It also gives you a whole body of studies that you can work from and things that you've learned um, so that when you do go to do bigger pieces, you have that material, you know what the colors are, you know what that light looked like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all, it's all there. It might not be perfect, but it's all there and you can refine it later on. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. That's been my experience as well. You've put it well. Mm -hmm. You know, let's uh, do a little tour of your um, studio space. I'd love to see it. Okay, so I'm so excited about my studio space. It, it's not finished but I gotta tell you I painted in the kitchen studio if you know what I mean for many many years um where I'm at right now I'm standing in the two and a half car garage um that uh is attached to my house and so I walk out my kitchen door and I'm in my studio and so I don't know uh you tell me if you can see uh what's going on but um when you walk in here so, so, so wait a minute. You don't have to worry about the remote uh, garage door opener or anything, right? Say that again. You don't have to worry about the garage door opener. No, no, <laughs> it's non-functional. Oh, I do good. Have two garage doors, but there are plans to take one of them out and put windows in. Oh, uh, nice. So that's one of the things that's coming this year in my studio space. Mm. Um, but okay, so I've got a. a uh, coffee set up here um, uh, by the back back window. I'm trying to see what you can see here. Yeah, um, I'm seeing your I, back door. Yeah, yeah, there I've you got go. my back door. I've got my uh, treadmill because I like to walk away every once in a while and get my body moving. I get too stiff. I get too involved, and I just need yeah. to move. So in the winter, I can get on my treadmill for a couple minutes, and then that really helps me. Um, I've got um, storage of all my knickknacks, and I don't know if you can see up top um, of things. I've just got storage. I've got a table. Are, are those are those things that you use for um, still lifes, or are they just your personal? Both. Well, both. Yeah. Um, yeah, both. Um, I like to uh, have these kind of things that I can use in still lifes, but some of them. You know, we're my grandmothers and family members, and so they, they have meaning for me. Um, I have a, a, a table here um, with uh, the grandkids station, so uh, when the grandkids come, they can uh, get the paper. They know where everything is, and they can get stuff out, and they can do what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just an old table, but I've put an oilcloth, you know, on it, and they can make a mess, and, and then that's really, that's good stuff. Um, I have a station here where I can do framing um, and some, if I want to stand and, and paint, I can do that. I don't know if you can see that. It's an old kitchen island is what it Actually, is. You could uh, keep moving just a little bit uh, the oh. other way. There you go. There we go. Okay. Got it. 
and then um, I have storage underneath there, so that's great. Can and you this, point, there? You go. Point it down just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. This, okay. Good. Go on. There, this is the door that's coming out. Um, so this space right here, this is a north-facing uh, door, and it's going to be all windows. Ah. There. I'm really excited for that to happen. That's wonderful. Uh, and then I've got my easel. Can you see my easel? Not yet. Yep. Okay. There it is. Okay, there's my easel and my, uh, I've got a screen. I've got um, all my equipment here, my palette, um, lights, all that stuff over here. Yeah. And then I've got, uh, you know, my my crazy million, million paintings that I cull through um, when I want to look for something to paint or if I'm going to a show and need something to put in a frame and, and send somewhere. And, I, and it looks like it's, uh, they are stacked in a countertop. Is that true? <laughs> uh, okay. In a counter? So, yeah. Now these are old kitchen cabinets that came yeah. from, from a rummage sale, um, which I can store stuff in underneath, but I've got these stacked up. I have, um, on the walls, I've got, um, ledges so that I can put wet paintings up. And then I found these terrific, I don't know if you can see this, these yeah. are library carts. Oh, wow. And I found two of them and they're on wheels so I can move them all around. And I've got, you know, my smaller paintings are all stored on these library carts. Um, That's great. Yeah, it's fun. Um, then I've just got a space where I can sit and read and think and I've got a little desk. Um, so I'm getting it. You know, I'm getting it where I really want it, and it's becoming the heart of me. You know, it's becoming yeah. where I want to be all the time. Yeah, but, that's a wonderful studio. That's yeah. uh, I remember seeing it on uh, getting developed on uh, Facebook. So uh, congratulations! Thank you, thank you. It's so exciting. <laughs> it is. Wow. Um, so, do you have any other events, uh, other kinds of things coming up for you? Um, I'm on the waiting list to, to paint it at Oshkosh. I meant to get my uh, application in faster, but I didn't. So I'm hoping to paint at the Oshkosh event. It's their second year. I did paint there last year. They did a really good job uh, for their first year of, of their event. There's some great stuff in Oshkosh to paint. Um, and then I am going in October to um, do the event in uh, Dubuque, Iowa, which oh, nice. I yeah, I really love that event. I've heard that's a wonderful one. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I actually helped them set that event up, um, get it grounded, and um, had many, many conversations about, um, you know, how to get this going and what, you know, what to do, what to not do. And then they did some stuff I could have never imagined doing that made that event a pre premier. And, and what were some of those things? Okay, so, oh, that's a good question. Um, they have, uh, they decided that younger people needed to be involved in plein air collecting of art. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they asked themselves, what can we do to facilitate that? And one of the things that they did was um, they have a, a, what they call a uh, buyer's promotional time so they have it's just a two-hour session as many plein air events do have uh, you know where you can buy a ticket and come early and get the best choice of art and stuff like that however what they did was they target marketed young millennial artists or, or business owners mm. and um, went and sold those tickets particularly to those people who haven't necessarily started art collections or had art in their businesses mm -hmm. or anything like that before. So what happened is these people walked into a room with, you know, 500 paintings of their community. Fabulous artists had come and done unbelievable work. And I mean, one after another, after another, they were in tears mm -hmm. over what they were seeing. They were just blown away by this. Well, guess what? New collectors were generated. Mm -hmm. I think, and this is my personal opinion, what's needed more than absolutely anything else are brand new collectors. Mm -hmm. People who maybe never bought art before. Mm -hmm. And you see that in plein air, where you don't see that almost anywhere else. 
Yeah. Because a lot, a lot of people are very intimidated to go to a gallery or to go to a museum or or an opening, an art opening, or something. That people get intimidated by that, but they're mm -hmm. not intimidated when they run into an artist on the street and have a conversation with them and get to know them. And then the artist says, hey, you know what? We're having a party Friday night. We're showing all this work. Come on. Why don't you party with us? Artists are really fun to party with. Yeah. <laughs> so they show up and walk into a room completely unprepared for what they're seeing. Yeah. And maybe they buy their very first piece of original art at a plein air opening, right? Maybe it's their very first piece and they haven't spent a lot of money. Maybe they, you know, they weren't prepared for that. But they take it home and they hang it on their wall and they look at it all year long. And, and what happens? It, what happens is every piece of non-original art begins to fade in comparison to the original art that's on your wall, right? You know, that's absolutely my experience for myself. For myself, I have very few uh, posters left anymore. Yeah. 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 So you know, they meant yeah. something once. Yeah. 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 Guess what? Next year. They're coming back yeah. and time they're prepared. They know how much money, you know, they might want to bring. Maybe they've saved for it all week long or all year long and they're ready to become and a real live honest to goodness collector is born. That's wonderful. You know, uh, a little self promotion here. I have a show coming up on uh, June 29th is the reception for it, but I'm, I'm painting uh, B scenes mainly. I have other things, but I found a meadery. Uh, the people that mead honey, you know, honey, uh, honey alcohol drink, but that's right part of the craft beer uh, uh, sort of uh, group. So I'm hoping to uh, find some uh, millennials that might show up to at least taste the mead and perhaps enjoy the art too. But that was one of my thoughts of trying to find something that that really would speak to. Uh, people that would care about that. So my next piece is to really look at uh, where I can promote this uh, to p get it in front of millennials, which one of the things is farmers markets. But I'm, you know, I, I'm quite aware of what you're saying. And I, the other thing I just want to say about that too is that I was staffing a booth that we had at the garden show um, in Chicago a few uh, months back, and I had a, a guy come up who was talking to me, a young man uh, in his 20s, um, saying that he really wanted a, a piece of art and that he didn't want it to just match his couch. He wanted an original piece of art. And I thought I was so enlightened, you know, that he uh, was there. And he said, but I don't have the money right now. I, I really like that painting. And he pointed to one of them. Uh, but it was um, a really interesting piece for me that um, there was somebody that really kind of, and I've told this story actually a couple of times to, to other artists that, there was somebody there who hadn't, he didn't, he wasn't so, uh, uh, I guess, seen, uh, he hadn't been watching so much HDTV. He really wanted the art. Yeah. So, you know, there, and uh, it was hopeful to me. Yeah. It's, it, because if you think about it, I mean, what, where is art collecting going? Where's art collecting going? And who is going to influence people to purchase paintings? Which, you know, some people say, been there, done that. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think anything that tugs at your heart is not a been there, done there thing. Yeah. Uh, um, and so how do we go from, <coughs> excuse me, That's people who have been collecting art for many years and know exactly what they like to people who are just beginning an art collection? Um, there's a gentleman who wrote an article about that. Um, not too long ago, and I think it was just published. I think Deke Palachek uh, had it published in the OPA newsletter um, about this collector who who bought his first piece of art and what that did in his life. Yeah. It was really, it, you might want to look that one up. It's a really, really good article. Um, yeah, so thank you. I definitely will. And maybe I can find the uh, link and, uh, or maybe yeah. you can help me find the link and uh, I'll put it with this chat. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. I'll do that. Well, I think um, we should probably uh, end here. This is a great and uh, also uplifting place to end. I want to thank you very much, Wendy, for participating in this uh, My Art Dish. And uh, I loved uh, all these nuggets to take away. And uh, congratulations on your studio. And let's hope you can find a successor for yeah. uh, <laughs> Wee Papa. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. All right. Thanks so much for having well, me. Oh, yeah.
Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to sign us off here. Thanks, right. everyone, for watching. Thanks,